All right, so as I said before, then I will try to do my best to show you how I uh, <clears throat> create my bait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the ingredients. Now I have taken some pictures of the ingredients, uh, which I will put in towards the end, so that way you can get a um, generalization of what I've used. Here we have <clears throat> some 32 ounce Velveeta sharp cheddar. As a thickening agent, we will use some flour. The main ingredient is going to be Magic Bait Real Deal Fish Oil. Now, I purchased this at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Uh, it's pretty much the only place that I've been able to find this at. Um, <clears throat> the bait that I've used previously, that I've created previously, that's been a very good producer uh, was made with this and it was just that was just one so here I bought two so we're going to double the double the power here we have some already fluffed out cattails this is the uh, end results of having dried cattails and when you pull them apart this one gallon bag is roughly two no three cattails so cattails produce quite a bit this is what we use this is the fiber that i'm going to use in this fiber dip bait that makes it uh makes it makes it easy for you to put it on a bare trouble all right so here we have the Velveeta cheese already mixed now just so you know to help get a good mixture i would put maybe a quarter cup of milk in your pan. Cut your cube, uh, your Velveeta into cubes. Now, once we have that, all right. So, first thing I'm going to do is put in the oil nice stinky smelly oil this is what's going to get everything awesome now my camera person is motioning me for to turn on the vent I am NOT going to turn on the vent for one to help her suffer two because the vent makes noise with which I want to make sure everybody gets to hear me as I am making this bait for you. Well, actually for me, but it helps you. So, and it, it, this is really, you know, kind of weird because also I have this really bright light on my phone for my camera, my the video, you know, and here I have light already, but go figure, my camera person, she goes and has the light on and does not turn it off but it's okay it's understandable it is you know my phone is really special something that she hasn't gotten used to yet so we're going to go ahead and pour in the oil lovely oil now pretty much for, for the most part this is what I'm going to be storing it in we have a Dollar General here in Kentucky. This Dollar General, $3.75, good size container. Now you can get yours at Walmart or any other place that can, you know, that has those type of items. Yeah, that's strong. But that's a good thing, you want it strong. Now the most fun part about making these films is having your camera person understand the nuances of uh, silence behind the camera so that way it doesn't pick up on the uh, film. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Cutting devices usually help.
go ahead and we're going to pour this right on in. Hopefully my camera person can stop pretending like there's the most nasty, disgusting smell they can ever have and actually work this camera for me. Because we're trying to make good quality videos. Alright, now the fun begins. Make sure you have your trusty hand mixer prepped and ready. We're going to pour in our cheese. Now, I would prefer that you try this with a mixer that started with a nice low speed. But, I don't have that luxury. This mixer, it's low speed, is a messy speed. So this will definitely be fun. So, we're gonna pray that I don't get it all over me and on video. So, that's low speed. There we go. Now, now that you've got your cheese mixed in with the oil, you want to start adding your thickening agent, which is the cheese, I mean the flour, sorry. Now, I know Especially for a lot of my family in California, uh, catfishing in California. Now I don't know how it's changed over the years since I was last in California. Great thing was the um, catfish marsh flavored marshmallows and mealworms, or cut mackerel, things like that for uh, fishing. I remember where me and my stepfather he he liked to use the cut mackerel and dip the cut mackerel in the hog wild dip bait. Not really understanding dip baits to the fullest, neither, neither of us. So, come to find out a greater purpose and, and better use for dip baits, especially with the uh, introduction of the dip tubes for the dip worms, um, so on and so forth. So here, now we have the uh, updated version, adding the fibers, and it's become more of a a fishable substance on its own without having to use it to dip your mealworms or, or your mackerel in them. It's, it's preferred to just use it as is. So here we'll add our thickening agent. Now the main thing is you want to get it to where it has a peanut butter consistency. Now you also want to try to get this done as fast as possible before your cheese starts to set.
Now, as you see, it's really cheesy. It's nice and thick. Starting to take on that peanut butter consistency, even though we know it's cheese. Now, after you start adding your other additives, well, specifically, primarily, the cattails. Now, also, as far as it replaces the cattails, sometimes some areas you're not able to get cattails. Uh, I know trying to purchase cattails online is sometimes a hard deal. So, you can offset that with cotton. Really simple, just cotton balls. Take your cotton balls, unravel them, pull nice thin little strips, and mix them in well. Alright, now that this is mixed, the flour has been added, nice thickening agent, it's got a smooth texture. Now from here, we're going to add our cattails. Now, to get the cattails in there, pretty much, I mean, this, this is no Martha Stewart type of deal. Get them in there in any which way you can. Fold them in, be all nice and prim and neat with them, or you can get them in there and just start hacking away however you can mix them cattails in there ah, there we go waste not want not Now, also, I will say that before you start doing any of this, especially with your, uh, say, your chicken livers, which is another um, prime catfish bait that people like to use, um, shrimp or whatever, make sure that uh, whomever the head of the kitchen department is, be it either your wife, your mom, whomever, make sure they're okay with it. A lot of times, even like say for instance, best way to use a chicken liver, put it in the blender, blend it up to where it's a puree, nice and liquidy, and then you mix it just like we're doing here, except instead of in place of the oil, it'll be the chicken liver, or the puree of chicken liver. Then you add your cheese and then you mix them well, just like we're doing here. But, blenders are hard to clean. So you might want to invest in a used one, go to Goodwill or something. Now, <clears throat> cattails. From what I understand, these are all the seeds from the cattails. Make perfect little fluffs. And as you see the you see them flying around just like dandelions. And you want to try to fold them in as fast as possible. I mean, they're going to get everywhere, so you want to make sure you clean the kitchen well once you're all done. This is a messy procedure. Let's see if I can find something better to fold these in with than this. Um, <coughs> so let's get some more. There. Now, for those of you with allergies, I would not recommend this. Not if you have allergies. If you have if you have severe um, hay fever or I mean hay any type of plant like allergies, 
then I would recommend using cotton and using cotton only. But as you see, these are flying around. Start breathing these in, and it's a done deal. See how the fibers are getting integrated into the cheese, which makes it easier to put on a bare treble hook. Now the main thing is mixing well. Mixing to the point to where you see no more of the brown from the cattails. Now, if you're someone like me who really just doesn't care, you can always go in there and start kneading it like dough. <clears throat> but understand that <laughs> the smell that you're going to have on your hands is not going to be a pleasant one. But see how it's taking on a dough-like consistency. And it really truly does not take that many cattails to make this fibrous, as you see. I tell you what, it's definitely a workout. Boy, my hands are feeling it. I tell you that now. See all those fibers? And that's what helps it to stay on the bare treble hook. And using cattails also, you don't have to worry about if you are specifically one of those that are truly concerned with the environment, how the waters are. I know using cotton, cotton is one of those very hard biodegradable type of deals. Um, but Cattails are very eco-friendly. They degrade over time. So no worries in having it harming the environment, the fish, polluting the waters. All right. That seems to be a nice consistency a lot of fibers are in there and this is just about ready to go fishing so on that note i'm going to pretty much end the video here now i will list the description of the materials used in the video i'm going to um explain where I got some of these things for those of you who have uh, access to I mean like a big sporting goods um, I mean even Cabela's is, is good for a lot of places I mean for a lot of these uh, ingredients and items um, if you can't find specifically this fish oil then another thing that I would recommend is specifically say from Cabela's they have 
um, um, smelly jelly. Smelly jelly has different flavors. I would recommend either the shad or the shrimp. Um, they also have others with garlic in it, uh, things like that. Now, garlic, I don't mind garlic, not at all. My biggest thing is you try to make it as natural as possible. Garlic isn't natural for a fish, rather. When you have channel cats and blue cats, this is one of the reasons why I was able to catch a blue cat and channel cat on my, on my bait, is because they feed on fish, primarily. Um, when you have species that feed on specific things, this is something that they're used to eating, then you want to use something with which is more familiar with them. People seem to think that catfish are scavengers, they feed off of you know dead and rotting carcasses. That's not really true. Specifically, blue cats, flatheads, channel cats, they are hunters. Now, outside of the hunting uh, aspect, channel cats might be a, a small, have a small bit of opportunistic feeding tendencies, uh, but they will hunt for their food. A lot of times, especially during the pre-spawn and post-spawn uh, times, you can find them a lot of times near the banks feeding on frogs, minnows, um, shad, uh, skipjack. So, I mean, it all depends. They, they hunt for their food. How else do they survive? Because things don't just drop dead every day within their reach. If that was the case, then they would stay small. We wouldn't be catching 30 and 40 pound catfish, even though I, I still haven't. But, I mean, you know, there's still, there's still those catfish that are out there that are 30, 40, 50, and better pounds. And they're there for a reason. They're that way for a reason, because they hunt for their food. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, there was gonna be something really important, but I guess that old age is creeping up on me. Go figure. Uh, well, I guess I will leave it at leave it at this point and uh thank you all for watching please subscribe like and all that other good jazz for my second video i will say that i have taken some video previously to this um which came to the so i guess i, I started it off pretty wrong because in the video that i have taken that i was, I was going to show you how to do this recipe so apparently I'm going to have to get together that video, put it together as best as possible because there's some pieces missing and I apologize for that and get that to you first, then post this video. So with that, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching.